Hello, my name is Wade Nimmer, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. One thing that people don't realize is that Rotary not only is it a lot of work uh, in doing humanitarian projects and everything, but it is also important to realize that we get together for friendships and fellowships. And with me today to talk about those fellowships is Todd Smith. Todd, welcome. Hi, Wade. How are you? <laughs> uh, thank you. I'm doing great. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, Wade, uh, currently I serve as the president of the Rotary Club of Montecito. And um, previously, uh, several years ago, I was president of the Rotary Club of Austin, Texas, the downtown club. Shout out for them. <laughs> and um, I uh, have a, had a career both in the motion picture industry as well as in real estate. And my latest, my most recent endeavor was to own a real estate brokerage back in Austin. Okay. Um, a little diverse as far as uh, career paths there. Yes, yes, <laughs> but not, not a stranger to what we're doing today. This is true, very true. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about how you got involved with Rotary. What drew you to the organization? Well, I was actually invited um, at a, another charitable function. I had attended uh, and I had participated in a single focus type charity organization and attended their gala dinner one evening and bought a ticket to that gala, sat at a table of mixed people, and the lady sitting to my left, um, we started chatting as one would do and so forth, and she said, well, well what do you want to do? And I said, well, I'm involved in this organization and that organization and that organization and that organization. <laughs> and she goes, how do you have time for all those meetings? And I said, quite honestly, I don't, I don't. She goes, well, would you like to hear about an organization that you could be involved in a whole bunch of different things, but just have to attend one meeting? And I said, yeah, what is that? <laughs> so she described Rotary. She invited me to lunch, and that was, what, 15 years ago. Nice, very nice. Now, we asked some people, and they have an answer for this, but have you ever experienced a Rotary moment, something that really hooked you on that? I'd love to I, hear about that. I absolutely have. I absolutely have. In um, 2014, I was very fortunate and privileged to be able to go on what we call an NID trip. Uh, an NID is a National Immunization Day trip uh, conducted by Rotarians who went overseas to India um, we went for about a two-week period. I ended up staying an extra week, so I was over there for a three-week period. But during that time, we were fortunate enough to not only, uh, I would say, troll the streets and um, ghettos of certain communities, trying to elicit mothers of infant children to bring their children the following day to these immunization days, but we were able then to actually deliver the signature drops to these babies, uh, these infants, these children under the age of five. And I can't say that there was actually one specific moment, but that whole collection of moments over that two-week period when we were providing the polio relief drops to those infants, that was absolutely my, my rotary moment because I realized suddenly how big of an organization we were and how small those drops and how meaningful they were to the livelihood of those children. And it's, it just changed my life forever. Yeah, yeah. I see it. definitely life-changing. I've been a few of those myself and they, they do uh, tug on the heartstrings, that's for sure, to say the least. We're here today to talk about Rotary Fellowships. So give me a little background on how you got involved with Rotary Fellowships. Well, you know, Rotary is a tremendous service organization where the first and foremost is you build fellowship among your club members. That's, that's the obvious and where you feel at home and you learn about your fellow club members to do good in your community is one thing. But Rotary International is a huge organization. I believe the latest numbers, if I'm not mistaken, are about, there are about 35,000 clubs worldwide. Well, each of those clubs makes up an organization of 1.2 million members. Human beings have much broader interest base than just perhaps a particular service project that they're doing. They have common interests. So Rotary, years ago, started establishing, and now I believe has over 100 uh, fellowship groups, 
that are international in focus but have a common thread of interest. I mean, if things like cycling or art or um, even going to Rotary conventions, the <laughs> convention goers as a right, Rotary right. fellowship. But it's, you have an opportunity as a Rotarian, if you join one of these fellowships, to broaden your experience in this organization and share with people who are like-minded and have common interests. Oh, very good. Um, now, what would you say is the most unique one that you've ever heard of <laughs> or seen? Because I know there's some pretty wild ones out there. Well, I brought along a couple of examples. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I brought along a couple of examples because there's, there's certain requirements for the organizations. Right. I mean, uh, I, as I mentioned, they must be international and focused. Uh, mm -hmm. You must have at least three countries Correct. represented as members of the fellowship groups. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, then, you must, you, they are run independently of Rotary. They may or may not collect dues. Most of them do. But in exchange for the dues that they are collecting, they have various forms of insignia that, that identify them as their particular affinity. Well, one of the more unique ones, based upon something that I share an interest in and joined, is this particular one. I don't know <laughs> if we'll be able to see that, but it's basically... Yeah, hold it out there still. There you go. It's a, it's a corkscrew. And uh, that is for the Rotary Wine Appreciation Fellowship. Gee, go figure, you know, with a corkscrew. It's, it's rather, uh, rather representative of the things that we know and love. Okay. So Good. that particular organization, to, discuss, to, to talk about them, they do quarterly newsletters. They're sent out. It's run by a man named of Conrad Heed out of Toronto, out of Ontario, Canada. And he publishes a quarterly newsletter with all kinds of interest, interesting articles about wine to help educate members in the experience of enjoying wine. But then more specifically, um, twofold. One, they will have, in certain regions of the world, they will have local organizations that get together for either a wine appreciation or a wine education type event but also at our international conventions, which are held annually around in various places in the world, most recently, let's say in Toronto this past year, and upcoming in Hamburg, Germany mm -hmm. next summer, they will host wine appreciation dinners. And those are really <laughs> blue chip events. They're, they're, ph they're phenomenal restaurants, phenomenal selections of wines, and you get to eat and drink and share the joy of wine uh, with your fellow Rotarians around the world. I would say one of the advantages of Rotary being international is no matter where the convention goes, you have somebody able to host the event or know where the hot spots are in that specific area or community. They really do. When I was down in, um, in Sydney, Australia, uh, they, they bust us way out into their wine growing oh, nice. region. Uh, and we, the, the dinners were at some of the wineries down oh, there, nice. so it was, it was quite impressive. Um, there's a couple of others that I brought along that, again, and I, and I don't want to create a bad impression among your viewers, <laughs> but uh, this, this particular fellowship that I also am a member of is, is also alcohol related. That's why I, 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 I'm reluctant. But it makes for a good fellowship, by the way. This, this is called <laughs> Brew, B R E W. And Brew is a fellowship uh, that, which stands for Beers Rotary Enjoys Worldwide. Okay. Beers Rotary Rotarians Enjoy Worldwide. That's Brew. And that's the Beer Lovers Fellowship. Okay. And then the other one that I have here is Music Lover Fellowship. Oh, okay. And right. this is, this is uh, just the, the G clef uh, with a rotary wheel right in the, in the center. And... Um, those particular insignia are, that particular insignia is for music lovers, mm -hmm. and that is broad based. But as I said at the beginning, there's over a hundred of these type groups. Mm -hmm. So these just happen to be three that I could put my hands on with my membership pins. Gotcha. Now, the music group, I know there's also a singing group, right? And so you have a different mix then of... There's a different mix, but quite honestly, what I've seen is that members of one, by and large, are members of the other. Okay. Um, there, are, there are certain distinctions and mm -hmm. so forth, but um, 
uh, much like in the, the beer and the wine, there's, there's crossover. True, yeah, I can see that. Um, on the, as an example, the wine group that meets, give us a, kind of an idea of how many people show up for an event like that during the uh, convention, just as a guess. Four buses, four, I would buses? say probably two to three hundred wow, at, a dinner, at a dinner. Wow. And they, they hold maybe two, if not three, dinners. Okay. The, the, the Beer Fellowship conducted in Toronto three different nights of uh, brewer, wow. brewery uh, or brew pub tours and uh, followed by a dinner at the end. So uh, they're pretty active. And, then, and again, it's, it is all in the spirit of fellowship, but there's an educational and camaraderie component because you all share this, this common interest. You must be a well-disciplined person to be able to go from wine to beer all in the same evening. Uh, <laughs> just asking and just making a statement there. Uh, I, I wish I had the cut button on that one. <laughs> good for you. That, that is good, though. But there are, as you say, there's everything. I know we have uh, stamp collecting groups. We have house exchange groups, uh, fellowships. What do you think uh, is so unique on these fellowships as far as a vision? Now, I know for a fact when I joined, we look at the groups as having reunions, maybe during the year or for sure at the conventions. Do you kind of see that same model? I do, I do. But uh, the modern era of communication uh, in particular, one of Rotary's requirements today as far as forming fellowships um, is that you engage with Rotarians using social media. So the opportunity to use things like Facebook and perhaps Twitter and perhaps other services and so forth, the one I'm familiar with is, is Facebook oriented. Mm -hmm. right. It is regular communication throughout the year uh, depending upon issues, depending upon events, depending upon happenings in people's communities or whatever. Okay. So uh, uh, social media has played a big role, I think, in the strengthening, if not also the growth of our fellowship groups. I would, I would agree with that. I've seen that happen, whereas before it was an annual event. Mm -hmm. Now you could have regional um, geographical areas where they're meeting even quarterly or monthly. I've seen some right. of them. Yeah, that's great. Now, um, of the three there, have you joined any of the other ones or considering joining any of the other fellowships? Yes, I've been involved in the chartering of one. Um, I've also explored, because I do have an interest in outdoor uh, activities such as mm -hmm. camping and okay. so forth. There is not one specifically oriented That's towards true. camping. That's true. They have one that is oriented towards canoeing mm -hmm. um, and caravanning. Right. But I have yet to find, but uh, I'm not done with my rotary career yeah, yet. Yeah. I may be involved in, in helping start a, uh, a camping oriented one. Nice. There is also uh, a cycling group mm -hmm. that uh, I am a member of. Okay. And uh, it's, they, they come into their own during one of the events which takes place in Tucson, Arizona. In right. fact, it's coming up in November. Right. Um, so they're very involved in that. But then it becomes just a matter of time and not wanting to spread myself too thin. Sure, sure. Now I know they have one on, um, Motorhomes, I believe that they actually meet up at some of the areas they could drive to, which is kind of interesting. I'm a member of the Motorcycle Fellowship. So Are you? Cycling, yeah, and also with the uh, Boy Scouts. Now, Boy Scouts was started originally by in the United States by two Rotarians, mm -hmm. two years after Rotary was founded and formed. So that seems to be another successful one. They pushed that, and actually the organization itself funds and assists with the Boy Scouts. So I think that was some of the other parts that are interesting because it goes beyond a fellowship, but actually participating, cooperating right. together. It's good. Um, when you go to the RI convention, we have a section that is nothing but the fellowships. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the, the big venue is called the Hall of Friendship or the House of Friendship. And... Um, the House of Friendship really is exactly that. It is all different kinds of either organizations who are pitching their products and wares to Rotarians, or it is, as you say, uh, clubs perhaps who are pitching projects and looking for project partners. But then it's 
fellowships and or action groups. The fellowships that are there are really there to gain members and expose Rotarians to their organization. Because quite honestly, Rotary is a big beast. Yeah. And whether you're a first-time convention goer or a multi-year attendee, there's always something new that seems to be on display there. And those booths are there to attract members to say, hey, look, at, look we have this common area of interest, maybe you do too. So they're looking for members to join. And in the same token, rather than walking around like a deer in headlights <laughs> to this huge football-sized yeah. arena, it is helpful to find things that are touch points for you. And when you say, hey, you know what? Oh, wait a minute, I like wine. Wait a minute, let me, let me find out a little bit more about that. Oh, wait a minute, you're having a dinner tomorrow night? Can I go? And if they have seats, yeah. you see how that, yeah. and it makes your experience at convention that much more rewarding. Mm -hmm. So I've always encouraged my fellow members who are going to the conventions to spend as much time as humanly possible in the House of Friendship to understand how big and broad Rotary is and the areas of ways, the number of ways that you can get involved. Now, for the audience, one of the benefits I see in the fellowships is meeting people one-on-one. -on -one. Have you had an opportunity actually to find somebody that you stay in contact with and some of the friendships that have occurred because of that? Very much. Uh, particularly, I will say, with the, uh, the brew group. Mm -hmm. I attended, uh, I was signed up prior to con convention. I was signed up for one of the three brew tours that were held in Atlanta, Georgia, two years ago. And uh, going to the first night, I had so much fun and met a handful of people uh, from various clubs, some from Europe, some from Southeast Asia, and even two from the, the US. And they each said that they were signed up to go the next night. Well, the thought had never crossed my mind to go a second night, but they were going to completely different um, breweries. Hmm. And whereas the word had gotten out ahead of time that everything was sold out, I went to the, 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 the uh, fellowship director. I said, by any chance, do you have any cancellations for tomorrow night? He said, yeah, as a matter of fact, I've got two or three. Well, I signed up then for the <laughs> second night. Well, so not only having met a small group of people the first night, I then returned and was able to spend nice. more time with them. And they, they actually have become rather close friends, uh, yeah. long distance friends, but they are keeping tabs. One of them is a current club president okay. uh, in the Netherlands. Hmm. And um, we keep tabs sort of on one another as I'm in my presidential year this year. And um, uh, she knows that we are, are going to be soliciting for help on a particular project that we're doing in our local community. And she's like, just tell me where and when to send the check. So, <laughs> nice. you know, if nothing else, a beer fellowship is, yeah. is benefiting me and my local community. And that's what I was going to ask you, but the next question would be, with these fellowships, first you gain the acquaintances, the friendships, but then because it's Rotary-based, how often have you seen or have you seen where Rotary benefits from that? In other words, it's an ex exchange of clubs, exchange of resources to create projects, for example, or events. I would answer you perhaps in, in a slightly altruistic way, okay. but I think any organization which provides opportunities for its members to strengthen the bonds between their members, is, it's, it benefits. Yeah. And by having at some point in the past understanding that these fellowship groups could do exactly that, Rotary has benefited from the beginning of the establishment of these fellowships. Yeah. So strictly by virtue, let's just say, strictly by virtue of my participation in the cycling group, right. I was then convinced to ride in the Tour de Tucson. Mm -hmm. The Tour de Tucson is one of Rotary's signature uh, polio awareness uh, mm -hmm. fundraiser events. 
Rotary benefited. Yeah. As did the polio victims. Right. Uh, as did the fight against polio. That, that was, I believe, a fifteen million dollar. Uh, it's extraordinary. Event. It's extraordinary. It's, it's, it's huge. It's it's, yeah. it's it's unbelievable. Yeah. But yes, I became aware of the event through my affiliation mm -hmm. with the fellowship group, and I was encouraged by the fellowship group to sign up and participated on a team, consequently, and we did very well in right. our fundraising effort right. and so forth. But, but anywhere that you can have an opportunity for people to feel more connected, and in this case, by a common interest, I think that that's good for the organization. Okay. Now you have a, you brought a list, right, of, of some of the other fellowships. If you wouldn't mind, scan through some, that one list there and, and tell us some of the ones that you've seen or you've heard about, or one that you think is quite fascinating that kind of jumped out at you like, wow, I need to get to know more about that one. Oh, well, um, fascinating and unique um, mm -hmm. and separate the, maybe I don't want to get to know more about them. <laughs> well, that's true, too. But uh, um, <laughs> antique automobiles, okay. for example. Uh, it's not my not my thing, but yeah. antique automobiles is very are very very popular right. and and familiar. Computer users, I have yet to <laughs> explore what that group does, mm. but I have an interest in exploring, and I actually quite honestly I keep looking for them at convention. I haven't yet, but I also haven't taken a deep dive. That's true. I haven't seen that group yet either. So. From this from this list, uh, which I printed off. Uh, there are hyperlinks where I can reach out when I choose to. I have yet to do so, mm -hmm. um, but I could reach out and find out a, more about their group. But now, tell you, us real quickly where you found that list. I found this link? list on Rotary.org. Okay. And I just did a quick little search on fellowship groups. Okay. But Rotary.org is the main Rotary website, Got Rotary it. International website. Got it. Very good. I mentioned cycling. Um, doll lovers. That's a unique one. <laughs> doll lovers. Um, uh, I had to uh, think of my UK English terminology when I read this one, but the club is called DRAFTS, spe spelled D-R-A-U-G-H-T-S, but that's actually checkers. So those are, those are, oh, those are che checker lovers. Okay. Um, something a little bit more serious sounding is a fellowship group for the environment. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have Fishing and flying, right. Right. golf. Mm -hmm. This is another one that I would love to explore, uh, although I don't believe I will measure up, but I would love to learn to measure up, and that is in the art of gourmet cooking. So there's lots of things. The hiking one, I, am, I will say I am a member of. Mm -hmm. um, trying to figure out how we get the canoeing and the hiking and the caravanning perhaps to coalesce under, oh, under something un, more like outdoor enthusiasts, right. that kind right. of activity. Um, there's horseback riding, uh, Latin culture, LGBT, uh, there's magicians, and um, motorcycling, right. you said you were a member of, photography, uh, rotary heritage and history. <laughs> that's that's one certainly that uh, probably you would have a strong interest in, I would imagine. <laughs> right. And then uh, Actually, rowing. I remember that one. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But and then rowing, rowing for example. Yeah. I would imagine they have a big preponderance of members up in the Northeast, where right, crewing right. And, and rowing is much more more common. Sounds good. Now, have you met um, members that were multiple groups like you are, for example, where you have the crossover of different interests in the same fellowship? For example, cycling and Drinking beer would probably lend itself well. I would imagine so. Um, I, I, I can't think of anyone right off the top okay. of my head. Okay. But many of us wear many different, many different hats mm -hmm. or badges. Okay. And so I don't think it would be very unusual. I think once you have exposed yourself to the concept of fellowship and the concept that you can enhance your Rotary experience by being a part of a fellowship group, mm -hmm. Then you start the process of exploring. Hey, wait, wait a minute, I'm kind of interested in that. Oh, I'm also interested in that. And it starts to grow. Mm -hmm. You have to do the first one first. True. And uh, many people don't know. And I know that what we try to teach our newer members in our club 
is that fellowship groups are really a way to broaden your um, uh, your rotary experience. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Now, as a guesstimate, uh, I have a, a pretty good idea of this. How many Rotarians would you guess, percentage-wise, actually join a fellowship? Based on your experience, I'm sure you're going to have a pretty good guess and be pretty close. Oh boy, I don't like doing this on camera. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I would say it's pretty low. Yeah, uh, I would yeah. say 10 to 15 percent. It's about 10 percent. Is it? Yeah, it's about 10 percent, which is unfortunate. I mean, it's such an opportunity out there for people of common interest to be able to get together for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that that's, um, uh, I know there is staff at Rotary directly responsible True. for the, the implementation, the acceptance, the implementation, and the growth of fellowships. Right. I know that that's in place. But it is really incumbent upon the individual fellowship groups to grow themselves. There's really no other uh, mechanism that I'm aware of where fellowships can either market to the broad-based right. uh, membership of Rotary. Um, and so that becomes a quandary. Until they get your name, they really can't reach out to you. That's right, exactly. I think the hardest part about that is being aware that they're even out there. Right. Most people have no idea. One of the reasons why we do the show specifically is for that. Most people have no idea what fellowships are or that they even exist. So that's one of the reasons I brought you on. I figured you'd be a great spokesperson for that. Um, in joining, you've seen the range of prices. What would you say is the range of prices as far as the annual dues is? Oh, I want to, I, I honestly don't remember, but it, I'm going to guess. There was an option, I believe, and I will probably receive an email from the, 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 the head guy on this one. I'm, from one of the three that are out there on the table, I will just leave it at that, that I believe it was maybe 20 or $25 yeah. a year to be a member, but there was an opportunity to maybe pay 100 or thereabout dollars to become a lifetime member and receive a classic pin oh, sort great, of thing. Great. So. They're certainly, they're looking to fundraise to cover their expenses because they will have expenses to either put on events, to publish newsletters, maintain a website perhaps. Sure. Um, there are expenses, I understand. But it's a very reasonable price. It's absolutely Definitely nominal. reasonable. Well, Todd, thank you very much for sharing that, bringing your pins with you. We really appreciate that and bringing the awareness of fellowships. Everybody, uh, if you get a chance, take a look at the Rotary Fellowships. There are quite a few of them out there, very unique, <laughs> all different. And with that, thank you very much. We will see you next time.